Hey guys, what's up? It's Momo. I cannot believe I am doing this intro again. It's been so long. It is so crazy to me how quickly that intro came back to me. It's been like a year since I filmed a YouTube video, but that initial wave, that was the most natural thing I've ever done. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut to the chase because there's no other way I can really say this, but I wrote a book. <laughs> So something that I think is so special about this space and it's why I want to cultivate it in some way and create some type of content on YouTube is because a lot of you have stuck around since I was 13 years old and watched me grow up. I'm now 23, it's been 10 years. I work my nine to five in publishing, which was my absolute dream. And I've even published my own book. So this is stripped and it is absolutely stunning. And what I'm gonna start out by doing is actually reading out the blurb. Everyone wants to know the secrets of a strip but no one is willing to pay the price. Ever since her mother left, Annie Wilson has felt estranged from her home. She's still stuck in the same town with the same memories, but without any family. Annie dreams of getting on a plane and never looking back, but she never imagined stripping would fast track that dream. Annie falls headfirst into the red light district and vows not to tell a soul. But when she starts dating outside of work, the lines begin to blur. As time goes on, Annie struggles to separate her personal life from her stage persona. How can she keep the two worlds separate? Stripped is a sex positive story about about feminism, friendship, and family we find for ourselves. When the lights go low, take a peek at what it's truly like to work the night shift. Stripped was released on October 5th, and it is currently available on Amazon, and all the links are in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get into the questions for today. What made you go with the idea of Stripped? Did you have it mostly planned or a rough outline? So let's take it back to 2019, when this book was in its infancy. So in 2019, I was 19 years old. I was working three jobs. Jobs. I was working 70 hour weeks. It was just this kind of stage of my life where I never spent any money on myself. I never hung out with my friends. All I did was work. Um, and the main reason for that is I had this whole dream of what I wanted my life to look like. There was so much that I wanted to do and I felt like I didn't come from a place that allowed me to do that easily. So what I wanted to do was work really, really hard and kind of build the life that I've always wanted. And at the time that foresight only went as far as getting to Europe for two months and going on this grand adventure that I planned for myself. So essentially what I did at 19 was I packed a massive suitcase. I booked um, rooms in Airbnbs all across Europe and I went without a tour. I met up with a couple of friends, but for the most part, I was alone for two months in Europe. It was the first time that I had been completely alone like that. So I distinctly remember being in Rome and it was in like the second half of my trip. And then suddenly I remember hanging out in my room, looking out at the streets in this beautiful street in Rome and thinking, you know, I have a real story to tell. I've never really sat with myself long enough to think about that. And it all kind of hit me. And suddenly I had this really intense urge to write, almost like a violent urge to create. Like I really needed to write down. I needed to exercise this story that I had inside of me. And that's when that story kind of really took hold. So Ashley has asked, what part of the book writing and publishing process of your book were you most proud of? Besides Besides the hours that I've actually poured into YouTube, I have never worked harder on a project. I have never dedicated so much time to one thing. I don't think I could even calculate the number of hours, but if I'm looking at this year specifically, I would come home from working my nine to five and I would work up to another, you know, six, seven hours on this book, just drafting the manuscript. That wasn't easy. I would be absolutely exhausted by the time I got home already. And I would kind of have to put on a different hat and I would say, you know, I've said that I want to get this book out into the world by October and I'm gonna have to make that happen. Favorite chapter. This is a little bit of a cheat answer, but my favorite chapter is the prologue. It's only like five pages long compared to probably the 20 page chapters. We dive straight into the action of the book. Annie is in the middle of giving a performance on stage at the strip club. It is just... <laughs> so immediately overwhelming, but I just really liked how those pages came together. And then I had a couple questions on plotting and planning. So one of them was tips for plotting, how to get structure in your story. With writing specifically, I know I need a really strong outline. Otherwise I feel like my story loses direction. I feel like I don't have a good enough starting point. For me, I know I really have to kind of marinate in some of the ideas before I put pen to paper. With Stripped, I had, <laughs> with Stripped I had like a 30 page document document 
for planning before I even started writing it. I had this really kind of intense chapter by chapter outline. I went through the main plots, the subplots, which characters were going to interact in what chapters. I did this thing where I made my characters kind of answer questionnaires about who they were, what they liked, their hobbies, what did they look like. Did you have a writing routine? For someone who loves routines so much, I actually don't have any routine when I write. I really want to frill up the writing experience, maybe a sweet little treat, light a candle. How many scenes did you write that didn't make it into the book? Oh my goodness, so many. If you knew how much I rewrote. I started writing it for NaNoWriMo. And if you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, it's basically this online challenge where you challenge yourself to write 50,000 words in one month. I completed the first full draft, which was about 80,000 words in three months. And then I got to drafting and editing and making it better. I did that consistently for about a year. And then I took a break and revisited this project at the beginning of 2023. Needless to say, growing up in that four years was a huge period of change for me. I came back to this book and revisited it with a lot of different perspectives. I honestly think that the plot remained really similar to the first iterations of the draft. Like all the plot points are essentially the same, but what completely changed was how this story was told, all the character voices and all of the character interactions. I think the best example is all of Annie's interactions with Luca. I completely rewrote the dialogue again and again and again. He actually wasn't even a character, I think in the first draft maybe and I decided that this book needed a romance to kind of round the story out a little bit more so Luca did not exist in the beginning and then he became a pretty pivotal character which is something that I didn't expect was self-publishing harder than normal publishing in your opinion so like I said I work my nine to five in traditional publishing at one of the big five publishers which is my absolute dream job by the way I would never change it for the world I plan to do this for the rest of my life but self-publishing is a completely different realm it is about creating and putting out your story completely by yourself, creating a brand, creating a quality product all on your own back. I do not think that one avenue, traditional or self-publishing, is harder or easier than the other. I just think they are completely separate ways of sharing a story. What I will say is that I originally saw self-publishing as a last resort for publishing my novel. And now that I've done it, I have to say that I wouldn't have had it any other way. To have complete creative control when it comes to a story that is so personal to me. Also having like complete control over my cover. What people don't know a lot about traditional publishing is a lot of the time you don't have much say over what the book cover looks like. So I'm so, so grateful that I got to scheme up what this cover would look like with a cover designer. She does absolutely amazing work and she doesn't usually take on self-published projects, but she said she was really intrigued by my foot brief, <laughs> which was essentially to make these bruised tired feet look really glamorous. We had a lot of ideas. Um, it mainly started out with this kind of foot band-aid idea and eventually she reworked it into something like this where you can see the band-aids through the heels and the figure is tying her shoelaces which is a pretty mundane activity for a quite glamorous different kind of profession. Obviously with trad publishing the absolute dream with having a book deal is that you get that full author care experience. You have this dedicated team in multiple different departments that want to make your story the best that it can be and reach its full potential and interesting for me the feedback that I got when I was querying um, my book. The agents came back to me and said it was well written, it was interesting, it was intriguing, but the main piece of feedback that I got was that this book didn't have a market. I thought of the millions of sex workers who work at the world's oldest profession. I think that that simply isn't true. I think there are a lot of people who want to hear about sex work. I think traditional publishing can be very limiting on how we perceive and how we present women in literature. And now as someone who works as a full-time marketing executive, I revisited this project this year and I thought there are a lot of people, you know, that this book will resonate with. And I think that really kind of lit the fire. I was like, you know what? You have given me a challenge. Challenge accepted. Let's rock this bitch. Can I buy it in Mexico? Mexico, and what is your favorite quote? Yes, you can buy Stripped in Mexico. I have linked it in the description box below. This is my favorite quote. Men loved to admire and worship women, calling us their beauties and their muses. But more than anything else, they love to cry witch. They love to watch pretty things burn before running to the ashes to collect what made them shiny, like ravens drawn to tinfoil balls. Did you read much while you were writing or did you have to almost choose one or the other? I definitely don't think I had to sacrifice reading. I've almost read 50 books so far this year alongside doing this project 
project because I think it really made me value being able to step away from this book and read someone else's story because by the end of it, I was so tired of reading the same book. How did you get your book to a point where you said, okay, let's publish? I never would have considered myself a perfectionist until I did this book. And I honestly think that I could have kept editing this for another five years. <laughs> like, I could have just kept going and going. And I think I got to a stage where I was like, you know what? I have done all that I personally can. Let's get a professional editor in here. Let's get her thoughts. Once I'd kind of worked through her comments and her feedback, I proofed it out to a few of my friends. I finally felt like, you know what? We're here. We have finally made it. This is not a solo isolating project anymore. This is other people's story now too. We have had input from other people and kind of having that as more of a collaborative experience made me realize I'm ready to share this. I'm ready for other people, you know, to get involved and to have different experiences with this book. I started to get really excited about it. What was your inspiration for Karima as a character? I find her so fascinating. So for those of you who haven't read Stripped, Karima is the secondary character. She is Annie's best friend um, and she works with her at the strip club. Karima is Moroccan Australian. She identifies as aromantic and asexual and she is also like the hottest thing to ever walk this planet. She has hips that could stop a truck. She has so much confidence. She will cut to the point and she is very blunt, but she also has so much love for Annie. Exploring their female friendship was just so, so special to me. A hilarious thing about Karima is that she also only ever wears blue. <laughs> so she only ever wears blue clothing. She wears blue fishnets, blue accessories. It's really funny because a lot of you have messaged me personally saying that I remind you of Karima. It was hilarious because she was ridden before I ever had blue hair, before I ever wore a lot of blue clothes. Maybe writing her character was just like manifest manifesting that for myself. She is a complete amalgamation of a couple of my closest friends. She took the bravery and the boldness and the strength of the person who is most close to me in the world. I blended those kind of character trait experiences with another one of my friends who is Moroccan Australian, who has had those experiences with faith and family. So those two best friends of mine were very influential when it came to creating Karima's character. And then from there, Karima kind of became her own character. She became a completely separate person that was so bold. I loved exploring her experience with body positivity and empowerment and sexuality while still being Arrow Ace in a sex prioritized workplace. I loved who Karima turned out to be and she's probably my favorite character in the book. But anyway, those are all of your beautiful questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for those who have bought Stripped, who have reviewed it, who have sent me messages. It has been so, so special this past three weeks that the book has been out. This has honestly been one of the most unique and special moments of my life, being able to share this extremely personal story in a safe place and having it being welcomed with open arms. So thank you for making the first three weeks of this book so, so special. Thank you for your questions and thank you for supporting me. I love you guys so, so much. So, 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 so much. If you want to buy a copy of Stripped, it is available on Amazon now. I will leave all of the links in the description box below. If you have a territory that you're looking for and you can't seem to find the book page link, please comment, please send me a message and I will send one through because sometimes it doesn't pop up. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I will hopefully see you guys soon for a new one. Bye.